So I want to, uh, hmm. Oh, I recessed the page. That's where the chat went. Okay. So I want to talk about 121 and 122. So 121 is unpacking with Ollie Debug and PE Studio. So let me shove these instructions to the side. And here's my Windows 10 machine with tools, which uh, some of these projects say use the Flare VM, but that's out of date. We're doing everything with this new Windows 10 with tools VM. So first you need PuTTY. So I'll download it just to make sure I've got the exact version that we're using. Uh, this is not the latest version of PuTTY. It's just an old version that I wrote this project using. It doesn't really matter what version you use, but for this project, uh, I have instructions referring to specific addresses and such. So it's best if you have exactly this version of PuTTY. And PuTTY is just a harmless SSH program. It's a common Windows utility. Um, nothing special about it. It is not malware. There's PuTTY. All right. Now, if you run PuTTY, it may or may not run. I run it, and it's thinking it's actually running. Okay, good. Sometimes you have to right-click and go into Properties and unblock it, but this Windows machine has not given me that trouble. Notice, by the way, it's published by somebody named Simon Tatum. Anyway, um, so if I run PuTTY, here's PuTTY. And PuTTY just lets you connect to a server. If you give it the name of a server, like ad.samsclass.info, I'm going to zoom in because people tell me that does work. You can see things better there. Sam's class dot info and then open. It connects to the server and now it asks you to give it a name. Login as. Now I'm not going to go any further. This is all the functionality I want. All right. But you see that it works. All right. Now um, we're going to compress it with UPX. So now we have a normal putty and we're going to make a compressed putty also. So I can go here into my downloads folder for example and I can make a command prompt inside there with Windows 10. PowerShell will be fine. I can just run PowerShell inside there. All right. And now that I'm in there I can do a DIR for example and see that in here I've got PuTTY and it's 531 kilobytes. I can compress it with UPX. UPX is already installed on these machines so there it is and you can do UPX compress um, with UPX that's by default it compresses. All you have to do is specify the output file here minus O right output to file. So I can do UPX minus O PuTTY comp exe and the input is putty and that should do it and it does do it my 531 kilobyte file shrinks down to 267 kilobytes about half the size and so if I do a directory I've got uh, putty and putty comp the second one is shrunk down to half size and it's still an executable file now if I run it it will still run the same now let me just check the hash of it with hash calc because that's in my projects and I want to make sure that works. Hash calc and if I take putty comp which uh, should be here sort there it is and I calculate the hash the MD5 should be C66 and so it is. Alright good. So that's the expected file. Now if I run putty comp, it runs just the same. If I give it the name of a server and click open, it gives me the same old prompt login as. So that is actually pretty curious. You can shrink it to half the size and it still runs. The UPX packer is a pretty complicated thing. Anyway, let's take a look at these things in PE Studio. So here's PE Studio. And we'll load PuTTY in Downloads, PuTTY. And while that's processing, I'll launch another instance of PE Studio. And open PuTTY Comp.
All right. So here's the original PE Studio. It sends it, by the way, to Virus Total, and one engine says it's malicious, which is pretty silly. It's just a harmless Windows SSH client. Um, but there are, should be indicators. No very suspicious features. Yeah, this one is still working on indicators. Okay. Um, that's virus total. Anyway, let's look at the sections, which are down here, and it's still working on that too. Well, that's annoying. All right. How about this one? This one here is also still working on indicators and still working on sections. Oh, this one made it through to the sections. Okay, so here are the sections in a normal legitimate putty. You have dot text, dot R data, dot data, and dot resource. These are the standard PE sections that you want to see. And uh, each and you have entropy here, which is a useful number. This tells you how much information is packed in there. An entropy of eight is compressed or encrypted code that is completely random. This entropy of 6.7 is pretty common for text sections that are full of assembly language instructions. And they are um, typically almost random. Our data, this data is pretty low entropy too, so that's something like uh, readable strings or something like that. And the same with this resource section. Uh, those have wasted space in them. Those could be zipped and made smaller in principle. All right, but anyway, those are the standard sections you'll see, text, R, data, data, and resource. Those are very common sections in an executable. But in this one, the compressed one, you've got UPX0, UPX1, and dot resource. So there isn't even any text section to include the, uh, the running code. And the entry point here goes to H60E0, which better be in this section here. And uh, I'm not sure I can see easily how to see that, but anyway. All right. <clears throat> this one here will have an entry point 550F0, which will be in this section, which starts at 1000 and has size 5C1000. So inside there is 55. Five. Uh, let's try that same math on this one. This one has an entry point of 86,000, and it loads at um, 449,000, so it's Kind of funny looking, that entry point. But I think the point of that entry point is it'll point back here in this section that starts out empty. Anyway, all right. Um, yeah, red, the entry point is hiding in red because it's, uh, it's actually pointing inside the UPX1 section, which is suspicious and not normal. All right, then you can try imports. If you look at the imports in PuTTY, here are the Microsoft API system calls, things like equal SID, copy SID, get username, and so on. Um, all right, I guess that's it. I'm trying to scroll. Okay, that's it. And uh, some of them are blacklisted here, and some of them even have MITRE codes. Uh, yeah, there's a MITRE column. There used to be a MITRE column. I'm not seeing a MITRE column in this version of... PE Studio, though, so maybe that's gone. Anyway, all right, uh, those are the imports. If you look at the imports of the compressed file, there are less of them. You can see that right away. Because you're not seeing the actual executable, you're seeing the unpacker only. All right. All right, and so now there are some flags you can get to show you got this stuff working where you get the entry point from uh, some of the uh, from one of the malware samples. And now we can use Ollie Debug and put Ollie Dump in it. And that should already be done in this machine. So we can now examine Putty and Putty Comp with Ollie Debug. So let's get rid of this. All right, there's Ollie Debug. All right, I don't need administrator rights. And by the way, plugins, there is something called Ollie Dump. So this Ollie Debug already has Ollie Dump installed inside it, which is what you want for this project. All right, so let me shove this to the side and let's open Putty in here, which is downloads, Putty. 
All right, and let me fix the appearance, view, uh, options, appearance perhaps. Yeah, this will do it. Fonts, change. There we go. Okay. So this is the legitimate putty. This is where it starts. These are the raw binary uh, machine language commands that work. And here's the actual instructions that run putty. Here's the registers at the start of putty. Here's a place where we can dump any hex values we want to see, raw memory in hex and ASCII. And here's the stack, which contains uh, temporary data. And the most important thing, it contains the return addresses used to find your way back home. So right now, it has a return address to go to some kernel routine and then return to ntdil and to base thread init chunk. These are the breadcrumbs that lead you back to Windows. We've come in from Windows into the running program PuTTY and then paused inside here. That's what the legitimate PuTTY looks like. Now, let's load PuTTY Comp in another version of PuTTY, in another version of Ollie. All right. And load PuTTY Comp. And looks like I'm going to have to uh, adjust the appearance of this one too. By the way, statistical test of this module reports that the code section is compressed or encrypted or something. So I'll stop analyzing. It knows that something's wrong with this program, which there certainly is. So I go to Options, Appearance, Fonts, Change. There we are. All right. So right away, we can see something strange about putty compressed. These instructions are not equal to those instructions. Push 60, push putty, call putty, push add, move, load effective address. This is different stuff. This one calls a Windows API function right here, get version X. This one doesn't. So, you know, you're not seeing real putty. You're seeing the unpacker for putty. All right. Now we can look at the memory maps. If you go to putty and go to view memory. All right. You can see here are the putty sections. Here's the header at 400,000, the text section at 401,000, and the uh, our data, data and resource section coming after that. This is the normal situation of a normal Windows executable. They all like to load at 400,000, and uh, that's what it normally looks like. And you can see there's uh, thousands of bytes available for each of these sections. But if you look at PuTTY compressed view memory, it's also loading at 400,000, but the 401,000 section here is UPX0, the next one is UPX1, and then comes dot resource. And not only that, if you look at what's inside those sections, if you dump this one, just dump, you see these instructions, 56, 6A, 0C, and so on. Those are the actual instructions in the text section. But if you go to putty compressed and you dump the UPX0 section, there's nothing in there but zeros. This section starts out completely empty. What's going on is all the data is actually stored in UPX1 in a compressed form, and it's going to decompress it and put it in UPX0, and that's where the code is going to appear. All right. So we've done that. So now we're just going to run the unpacking stub. So we go back to the CPU window. I'll make this one big. All right. So if you look at this, you can use the page down key to go down one page at a time. It's not very long, like about 10 pages, until you hit the end of it. That is the end of the unpacker, right here. It does all that junk to unpack, then it has a jump, which jumps to the real starting address, and then it's done. All the rest of this, or this, this is the jump here, that jumps to the real starting address, and after that it's all zeros. I don't know what this 48 is, but it doesn't matter. So this is the unpacker. 
And so what we're going to do is put a breakpoint here with F2. It'll turn red. And now we can run to that unpacked point. So we do run right here. Run the code. It goes to the breakpoint. Breakpoint at the... And now we can see what it did. Um, if we view the memory sections again and look at what's in UPX0, now it's all full of code, all full of bytes which spell out assembly language instructions. And we can see them if we now do one step, which is debug step into one instruction. I'm going to do this jump and go to address 4550F0. Now I'm there. Now I see these instructions. And if I compare this to the real putty, now I've made it back to the real putty. This is push 60, push putty com, call putty com, move EDI, move AX. This is where it is. It unzipped the real code, put it here, and now I'm running through the unzipped code. So that's how it works. And this shows you quite a few of the techniques we were talking about today. This is how you find something that unzips or decrypts something, run it, and stop when it's done, and then you can get the results. Now, you can dump the decrypt code right from the memory map, but there is a plugin to try to create a runnable program out of it called uh, um, Ollie Dump, which doesn't really work as well as I'd like. But you can use it. Here's plug plugins Ollie Dump Dump Debugged Process. And then this box pops up asking you to fill in a couple of instructions. The start address is 400,000, and the, the uh, add 55050 to get to the real. Um, location here, 4550F0, so you can see it's correct. It correctly figured out where the starting point is. And so you can just hit dump, and it will now give you a file to save, so I can call this putty dumped. Putty.exe. And we can now take a look at that dumped file. So if I look at it here in downloads, all right, you can see it went from five nine from two sixty one up to five fifty three. The original was five nineteen. It's not a perfect reconstruction of the original unzipped file like you get with UPX. But if you didn't have access to the unpacker, um, this is one way to pack it, unpack it by manually in a debugger. And you can examine it in PE Studio, and you'll see uh, the imports are mostly restored. I don't think I'll bother doing it live. You can see it here. The sort of thing you'll see. Uh, I was able to restore the imports to some extent and the strings to some extent, but further repair is needed on a file dumped in this fashion to make it actually run. And uh, in, I actually got sort of fed up with using uh, Ollie Dump after this, and I realized it's easy enough to just dump the memory section right from the memory module. But anyway, uh, there's a few projects you can do there uh, to uh, practice using some of these tools to analyze executables find a few flags.